Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I want to thank all the witnesses that are here and thank my uh, colleagues, uh, Senator King and Representative Gallagher, for, for being uh, here with us today. We look forward to hearing from you on the best ways to protect our physical infrastructure from cyber attacks. I think it's a very timely hearing as we've seen uh, attacks here in, in the last several months, how the federal government can partner with industry, state, and local partners, and what gaps we have that are leading to our vulnerabilities. This committee has a leading role in ensuring the safety and security of our nation's core infrastructure system, and we're committed to being a strong federal partner in tackling the most challenging issues that cyber threats present. Uh, we must work together, and I think we will, uh, on this issue to find solutions that will safeguard the whole of our core infrastructures, which include our water systems, our port and inland waterways, flood control infrastructure, highways, bridges, and tunnels. The speed of advancing technology and the improvements this has on our day-to-day -day lives of all Americans is extremely positive in a lot of ways. We are working towards a more modern and a more connected transportation system. This does, however, create a level of urgency for implementing strong cybersecurity measures. On our roads and bridges, vehicles and infrastructures are becoming more connected and smarter, which these types of advancements, increased data and access to that data, can result in safety and privacy uh, threats. It opens our transportation system up to vulnerabilities that didn't exist in the past. To help address these types of threats, our committee passed the Surface Transportation Reauthorization Act of 2021 in which we expanded eligibilities under the National Highway uh, Performance Program, NHPP, and the Surface Transportation Block Grant Program, STBGP. We all have little initials for everything, for cybersecurity protections, and added a requirement for the Federal Highway Administration to develop tools to assist transportation agencies in protecting and recovering from cyber incidents. And I think it's important that we have um, the capacity, uh, a lot of our local systems don't have the capacity to really meet these challenges and need some assistance. These provisions will help to protect our highway, bridges, and tunnels against emerging cyber threats and protecting our critical transportation infrastructure. Cyber attacks are also a growing threat to our water and wastewater systems. We've seen a growing number of these systems fall victim to these attacks, which have significant implications on public health and safety. These attacks are very scary for the public when you think about your water system being invaded, when they incur, and can leave us questioning the safety of our water systems. I'm proud of the work this committee has done so far to address cybersecurity vulnerabilities in drinking water and wastewater systems. The Drinking Water and Wastewater Infrastructure Act, which passed out of this committee unanimously and was approved on the Senate floor by a vote of 89 to 2. How much? 89 to 2 includes provisions that provide funding for protections against cybersecurity vulnerabilities to our water systems all around the country. Though I'm proud of our work, there's more work to be done, and the chairman talked about this. I look forward to hearing from our witnesses on the ways the federal government can act as a better partner in protecting our drinking water and wastewater systems from cyber attacks without costly mandates that can, can distract from the core mission of providing safe, reliable, and affordable water surface to the American public. The physical infrastructure of our ports, inland waterways, and flood control systems are also potential targets for foreign adversaries and cyber criminals pursuing ransomware attacks. Hacking of these systems can harm our economy and pose threats to human life, property, and the environment. Providing the tools to the government agencies, industry, part industry partners, stakeholders responsible for protecting, protecting our critical infrastructure from cyber attacks is essential. Maintaining resiliency against cyber threats is also an er ongoing and ever-evolving process. As the, as the chairman said uh, as well, and a little bit differently, but it's not a one-and-done event. We cannot put blinders on and think we've finished everything uh, when we come to envisioning potential threats because we know those threats change daily. Government agencies such as the Corps of Engineers have been partnering with other agencies and local communities to address cybersecurity for our infrastructure. We need to continue to support training exercises and information sharing between agencies to protect our critical infrastructure, such as the electrical grid, our water systems, transportation systems, and emergency response systems. I expect that the committee will continue to include cybersecurity policies in our WERDA bill, which we're beginning work on. That's the, the never-ending story WERDA bill. And as we have in our transportation, drinking, and wastewater legislation. I look forward to hearing from our witnesses today about the best practices and key challenges facing this security 
and safety of our transportation systems and how we can work together towards protecting all of America's Americans and uh, critical infrastructure through strengthened cybersecurity measures. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.